All right, so now we're going to find the derivative of the log function. And you probably figured that we were going to do this, because why were we talking about log functions? Because we weren't going to do some calculus with them, right? So if you want to know where the derivative comes from here in your book at the top of this page, um, there is the proof. I'm not going to go through that proof in the video, and I'm not going to uh, show it to you unless you want to. But if you would like me to explain that proof to you, I'd be happy to. Um, but basically, just know that it's true. I'm vouching for you that the derivative of the natural log function is what's right here in this yellow box. So the derivative of the natural log function is 1 over x. Okay? And we use this all the time. We use this all the time um, in integrating and deriving. And anyway, it's really helpful. Okay? And then um, if we have a log of a different base, then the derivative is simply... 1 over x times 1 over the natural log of the base, okay? Now, remember that sometimes this x is not going to be just um, a, like, it's not just going to be x, it's going to be a function. And so if we have, if this is a function, then we use the chain rule, right? The derivative of the outside function, which is ln, is 1 over whatever was, you know, this is the chocolate over the peanut, right? 1 over the peanut, okay? And the peanut stays intact. Then we multiply by the derivative of the peanut, okay? So basically, that's just what you do here. You can memorize this one, you can memorize this one, or you could just remember that this is a chain rule thing and that we need to use the chain rule every time, basically. So let's actually differentiate. Okay, so here's our first, our first option. So the natural log of 5x. So 5x is the peanut, and that's our inside function and our outside function is ln of something, right? So the derivative of ln is 1 over the inside, still intact, right? So the derivative of ln is 1 over x. So the derivative of this one will be 1 over 5x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 5. So in the end, we get 5 over 5x, which is just 1 over x. Okay, I should label that, that that's y prime. All right. The second one, it's pretty obvious that outside function is the natural log, inside function is 3t squared minus t. So the first thing we do is we derive the outside, which is 1 over the peanut, still intact, t squared minus t, times the derivative of the inside, which is 6t minus 1. So in the end, we end up with 6t minus 1 over 3t squared minus t. And again, that's x prime of t. Just to give myself some proper notation. All right. Now this one, we see that this is not a function inside of a function. It's two functions multiplied together. So we're going to apply the product rule. So what is f of x? And what is g of x? Well f of x is x, and its derivative is 1, and g of x is ln of x, and its derivative is 1 over x. And so then we just use the product rule, which is fig plus gif. So in the end, we end up with ln x plus x over, well, let's do this, x times 1 over x, which gives us x over x. So in the end, h prime of x is ln of x plus So, um, one thing that you might notice about the, um, the natural log function is that the absolute value doesn't change the derivative at all. And if you think about that, the absolute value of some number um, makes all of them positive, right? And when we have the ln of x, the only numbers we can put in there are positive, right? So we can't put any negative numbers in there. So, on our last homework assignment, you graph ln of the absolute value of x, and it looks like this. It should be approaching that asymptote a little bit better than that, but you get the gist. Um, okay, it looks like that because that means then now we can put in, we can put in negative numbers now instead of just positive numbers. But look at the derivatives of these of these different functions; they actually are the same. So we the absolute value doesn't change the derivative of the natural log because 
we normally can only put positive values in, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so if we're differentiating, we just ignore the absolute values on this one. Okay, so this would be the same as the derivative of ln of 5 minus 2y cubed. And so again, we do the derivative of the outside function with the inside still intact times the derivative of the inside function, which is negative 6y squared. So we have negative 6y squared over 5 minus 2y cubed. Okay. Now, we have a look at this one and you freak out because you're like, okay, here's the monkey wrench. I knew it was too easy. Well, um... Do you really want to try to differentiate that? You really want to do a product rule and then a quotient rule and you want to square that bottom? Like, that's going to be awful. But remember, with logs, we have all these extra, like, um, we have these properties of logs that we can use to simplify this so that we don't have to use all of those special rules. Uh, we don't have to do product rule and all that. So, all simplify first. So, the first thing I see is I see two functions multiplied together. Um, Actually, two, let's start with the two functions divided by each other, right? So I have ln of x times 2x plus 1, and that's divided by ln of x squared plus 1. So remember that the properties of logs say that that's the same as if I subtract the natural log of x squared plus 1. Okay, since they were dividing, I could do that. Now, the next thing I see is two of them multiplying together. And so I know that I can split those, and I can say the natural log of x plus the natural log of the square root of 2x plus 1. And then we still have minus the natural log of x squared plus 1. Okay? And then, and then, and then, <laughs> we see that this is really 2x plus 1 to the 1 half, correct? Okay? Now if that's 2x squared or 2x plus 1 to the 1 half, we can bring that 1 half down. So now we have natural log of x plus 1 half natural log of 2x plus 1 minus natural log of x squared plus 1. And now it's going to be really easy to derive this. So y prime, remember we can just derive each of those terms individually. So what's the derivative of ln of x? Well, it's 1 over x. What's the derivative of this? Well, it's 1 half times then the derivative of, of that, which is 1 over 2x plus 1 times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2, uh, minus ln, um, sorry, not ln, 1 over x squared plus 1 times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. So we're just going to simplify this down, 1 over x. Those um, 1 half and 2, they cancel each other out, and we end up with just 1 over 2x plus 1 minus, and then there's 2x over x squared plus 1. Done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay. So, um, this is another proof, and um, I'm going to do example 8 first, and then I'm going to come back to the proof, so um, it's okay if you don't want to, because I know proofs sometimes just trip people up and they just get so confused because they get overwhelmed with the, all the extra math, okay? So, we know that the, fu the formula for a, a log is that the derivative of log base a of x equals 1 over x times uh, ln of a, okay? So that's, we know that. So let's just use that here, and then we'll go back and see why it works. Okay, so first things first, that means y prime is going to be um, 1 over x squared plus 1 times ln of 2, correct, because that's the derivative of this, but then we got to multiply by the derivative of the inside, so that's 2x. So we end up with 2x over x squared plus 1 ln 2. So the only difference between this and the natural log is we tack on that ln of 2. Um, because, you know, we would have tacked it on with the natural log before, but ln of e is 1. So there you go. All right, here's the proof. 
The reason that this works is because of the change of base formula. So the change of base formula says that if we want to change the base of something, that um, log base A of X equals ln of X over ln of A, right? So I can just replace that and I can say, well, what's the derivative of log base A of X? Well, it's the same as the derivative of ln of X over ln of A because that's the change of base tells me that those are equal. And well, what is this? Well, that is the same as the derivative of ln of x times 1 over ln of a. Okay, now ln of a, a is a constant, so that's just a number, okay? So when I take the derivative of this, the number, the constant, just stays the same, right? So the derivative of that is going to be 1 over ln a times the derivative of that actual function, which is 1 over x, which is 1 over x ln a. So that is where that came came from if you wanted to know that. And that's it. That's all there is to deriving logs.